and Ty can't figure out how to open the door. Apparently I'm trapped. This is Budget's version of a Jetta, apparently. Wait, elotes. Street corn, delicioso. I'm eating. So now that we've decided to move on to a sailboat and begin this new adventure, it's time for us to take a few steps. First, we need to start looking for boats. So we did what most people do and we got on Yacht World. We typed in our search criteria, the manufacturers of boats that we thought we would be interested in, the size of boat that we thought would work for us, the price range, and of course, we looked all over the world to see if we could find a boat that would fit into all of those different pieces of criteria. Next, it's time to find a broker. More on our thoughts and experiences with brokers in another episode. However, we did find a broker and went with Gary at Yachts International and his associate, Rudy. After weeks of looking on Yacht World and talking back and forth with Gary and Rudy, we decided it was time to plan a trip to Florida and actually step foot on some boats. In all of our searches so far, we thought that we would go with a leopard or a lagoon, but at picture value on all of these brokerage websites, we really thought that we wanted a leopard. Probably somewhere in that 39 to 42 foot range we figured would be just perfect for us. So after a miserable flight experience, no thank you, Frontier. Thank you, McDonald's, for coffee. <laughs> thank you, McDonald's, for coffee. We're in Fort Lauderdale, driving down to Hope Sound. To Hope Sound. Tomorrow's a big day. We get to see boats for the first time. I'm not sure whether I should be calling them boats or... <laughs> As Sydney would say, yatches. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of exciting. We're, gonna, we're moving to the ocean. We're moving to the ocean. My new address, ocean. Blue water. Okay, it is Monday morning. We are getting ready to get on the road and drive from Hope Sound down to Fort Lauderdale. Because we're going to go look, look at, at boats. boats. <laughs> are you recording? Yeah. So after a really exhausting day yesterday of looking at boats for the very first time, we were a little bit more than overwhelmed. Um, and just on sensory overload. So we thought it would be a good idea to just kind of get a good night's sleep, just collect our thoughts and then regroup about everything today. We'll kind of talk kind about of what we liked and didn't like. and Get a plan and yeah. where we want to go forward from here. So it's Florida and it's beautiful. So we're going to go have lunch. And we're going to one of our favorite places down by my mom's place in Tequesta called Papachulos and it's a cool little taco joint and 
tacos. They've got good tacos and margaritas. You ready? Yeah. Alright, margaritas. After a whole day looking at boats, and we looked at it. Seven. Okay, so let's start at the top. So we looked at a Lagoon 39, and I cried <laughs> on the inside. It's not that bad. It's a really nice car. It just, when we walked up to it, it was massive. Like, it seemed so big. But as soon as we got on it, I felt confined. And I'm sure that a Lagoon 49 is fine. And what did I say, 49? See, I really just want a bigger boat. <laughs> I'm sure a Lagoon 39 is fine. The problem is that for me, I'm not sure that I can transition into this new lifestyle and feel that confined. Like the space inside, and I know you only spend so much time inside, but still, even walking on the outside of the boat, the cockpit was small. It, the, the cockpit was small, but you could easily fit comfortably four, five, six people in, in the And I disagree. I think that it's not that comfortable. So, I have close anyways, friends. Anyways, that was the first one that so. we looked at. But <laughs> I just don't think that it's in the cards. And although I know we talked about the fact that our range would be that maybe 38 to 40 would be optimal. I think after seeing yesterday that that's different. I could do a 39 and she could I can't. Um, so then after that we saw a leopard, the green boat, the leopard 40. We'd seen it on Yacht World several and it was times over. Just keep in mind that the 39 boom is only a few years old. The leopard 40 was an 06. It was like an 06 or so it, although it felt bigger to me than the 39, and I don't know whether that was because of layout or kind of what the transition period was with that, that, that the year range makes it feel different, but I felt that the 40 felt bigger. I think that especially the new Lagoons have a, they've got more space on the inside, they're, they're wider. So I actually felt there was more Thank space. You. I felt there was more space in the 39 Lagoon than there was in the 11. But again, this, this is about personal preference. We came down here and we were dead set on getting a. We thought it was going to be a leopard, probably 40. 40. Is really what we thought. Newer than the 06 that we looked at, but the green boat we figured could be a contender because of its price point. And we came to Florida to look because, well, like a broker said, just. You go shopping in Fort Lauderdale for boats. And if we would have found one down here, great. I mean, we were still looking, obviously, but um, I don't think there was any solid we should buy that boat on this trip. Did you think? Well, there was, but we couldn't afford it. Um, so we'll get there. So the next boat that we looked at was a, a Lagoon 400. Um, it felt better than the 39. Maybe more doable, but I really still was not in love with the size. I mean, it it was better, but so let's get back to this. It's, it's deceptive. So when you walk up to like that first boat we talked to, you walk up on the dock, and from the water to the top of the hall, you mind you're already saying on the dock that's above the water. By the way, this margarita is really good. Just so you know, it's a very good margarita. <laughs> Cilantro, pineapple, it's great. It's a little mezcal. From the water to the top, it looks huge. Six feet vertically, seven feet of free uh, freeboard up off the water, just at the top of the holes. It seems really, really big. You gotta keep in mind that that entire space is split into two smaller holes, and it just gets tight. So when you get on the inside, it's way bigger than a camper I've been on. And these are kind of campers on water, right? Um, so it's deceptive. The boat is big. The living space is not. And so we went from there, a Lagoon 42, 42. Um, which actually it's a good I size felt, boat. And it really is a good size boat. I felt like if I was going to make a decision based on just saying those boats, I think that the 42 would be pretty close to ideal. I was I felt comfortable in it. I felt it was smaller, but I didn't feel as small and as cramped as on the 39s or the 40s or the 400. Um, so I think that one could be a contender for us. Um, Keep in mind, we've never lived on a boat. 
or sailed a boat or been on boats before yesterday. So, but this is, I mean, I mean, we're not 20, so we've... <laughs> we're a little used to a certain this level like of space. things. Yeah, that, space and comfort and... Um, so, we saw a Leopard 44. We, yeah, we saw what we thought was going to be our boat when we came to Florida. Our, our, we, we saw a boat that we really thought was going to be the boat for us that we liked the most. Uh, take budget out of, out of the whole mix. It was... Uh, uh, a leopard, a leopard 44. 44. It was beautiful. And I will say that in difference, this boat, we'd seen it on Yacht World before. So when we got up to it, we stepped on it. I knew exactly yeah. this boat. And the pictures was exactly, exactly the way it seemed. Like, whoever the listing broker was on that one, like, it really came across exactly the way I anticipated. And that's important because most of the boats you see on Yacht World, and then you They're get not. on the boat, the pictures on the boat are not indicative of the actual boat. And it's not what you think it is. Some of the boats look better in person than they did on the pictures. Right. Even the ones that we thought were photographed well. But this boat, I don't know if it was space it was, or camera, they did a great job. It was beautiful. The problem is that this boat was significantly outside of our budget. So It was a lot. But it was beautiful. And if I could have afforded it, I think that... Yes, because we knew that we would like the 44. We wanted a more contemporary looking boat. And it was definitely with the gray tones, that kind of washed gray tone and everything. And it, it really... Took, it was a beautiful And it was beautiful. Boat. Beautiful um, boat. But just outside of our price range. We want a nice boat, but we want to be able to use the boat and not be boat for it. So then having a conversation with our broker while we're kind of continuing on this process, you know, show us something that is in this size, but isn't maybe as expensive or something. So, I mean... Well, keep in mind, we also had to share our shopping day with our friends Alan and Dee Dee. You say had to. I actually am glad that we did. Um, well, when we showed up, we thought we were shopping alone, and we thought that would be a good thing. And then we were like, oh, there's another couple here shopping with us. It, it, we're not going to get as much attention to be able to see as much stuff, and that was actually the exact opposite. Totally the opposite. We were both in the same budget. We we wanted a, 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 a leopard. They wanted a lagoon, uh, no. and um, so they were figuring forty four. Yeah, they were. We were figuring forty. So it wasn't like we were competing for the same boats or anything like that. But we're in close to the same price range. But the other part too is is that their timeline was a little bit more advanced than ours. So they were going to be purchasing before we were going to be purchasing. Yeah, I, so I think they're a few months ahead of us. I think that the navigation of our broker to put both of us together was very um, systematic on their part, and it worked out in both of our benefits. And quite frankly, when the rubber, you know, meets the road, I'm glad that we went with Alan and Dee, Dee because we were able to bounce ideas off of each other, um, like what they thought was important based on their experiences, because they've been sailing before and we haven't. Um, our, our, yeah, our construction background and what we thought would be important or problematic or not problematic and just kind of really talking through all of those processes together. So yeah, it was I, really really, great being I really enjoyed it. And um, Alan and I have already been texting back and forth, so it's kind of great. Um, that was awesome. So. Anyway, from there we went after the Leopard 44. Um, we went one last place that actually had two boats at it. Because they wanted to see a Leopard, a Lagoon 440. And we didn't think we wanted anything near that big. Um, we didn't think we could afford anything that big. So um, we actually all went just to go look at that boat. And when we were there... It happened to also be... If you can deal with this... It was a Lagoon 450 yeah. fly bridge. It's and I cried again, <laughs> but for a different reason. Well, we looked at it, and the, the guesstimate that our broker gave us was like, hey, you know, if you get a charter version a few years old, you might be able to pick one of these up mid threes. We were excited. Maybe low four. Maybe low four. Which was beyond was our budget. It was beyond our budget. I was going to stretch it. Um, Sorry for the noise. But the chocolates are important. When I stepped on the 39, I was disheartened. And almost to the point where I thought that if this was if this was what we had to be in, I'm not sure that this adventure would be for us. Because I didn't think that I could live in that. But then of course she likes the nicest, most expensive boat. <laughs> but then we got on the 450. 
and I sat on the bow seat at the front of the boat on the 450 and looked back at the boat and I just welled up with tears because it was like I was meant to be there. Here's the problem. We thought, hey, the boat, maybe we'll buy this boat, it's for sale. So we go back and look at it, and it wasn't low threes. It wasn't mid threes. It wasn't mid fours. <laughs> it wasn't even mid fives. 607. 609. Oh. It was 609. Yeah, either way. Still, it's like buying a half price Ferrari. <laughs> I still can't afford it. Um, so I cried again, but it's fine. So that was a rough day, which is why we didn't film anything yesterday, because at the end of the day, we thought the 450 is what we want. Maybe we can do this. And it's... so. Well, let's talk really quick about the 440. So after we saw the 45, we went on to the 440, and we looked at that, and although they're similar in size, um, there were some nuances of things that seemed different on the 450. Nuance. Um, the 440, they stopped making... However long, however long ago. So it's got wet heads. And that was the key. That was the big pushover for me is that it, they were all wet heads and I, I was not about and that. the 450 has dry heads. Even the smaller lagoons and the, the smaller leopards all have, even the older ones have dry heads. So that was a big deal. I, I don't want to wipe down my bathroom every day. I know that seems kind of petty and stupid, but we're trying to keep enough moisture and provision out of a boat. I don't want to have to wipe down everything in a bathroom and make everything waterproof to be able to, to take a shower and use the restroom. Also, the, co the rear cockpit's way small. And it, si yeah. it sinks down in like a little... Uh, it, seems like, it feels like a bathtub to me. I, I didn't like it. There wasn't a way to walk from one side to the other easily. Um, where's the 450 behind the, the salon? So all of this is going into telling you that after everything that we saw... Even though I could do a 39, and Kim cannot. Even if I would rather do a, a newer 39 and be tight on space than do something older, Kim really wants a 450. So now we're just, I think that we now, we came to Florida looking for a leopard in the 40 range, and we're leaving Florida and wanting a lagoon in a 45 foot range. And I think we just need to look. I mean, if we find something that's beat up, we can probably do some work to it. Um, well, and I just say beat up. It just needs well, some work. we already know it's going to be a charter version. So by virtue but, but we want a charter version. Right. Tell them why. Because I had the brilliant idea that if that's you a get a charter idea. version, it's a four cabin, four head. We cook. Like, that's our thing, obviously, coming from the food trucks. So um, our, we have kitchen accessories galore. So... We are seriously paring down our kitchen, but unfortunately, based on the amount of cooking that we do, we've already decided that the galley is going to have a significant refit done to it. It's going to have induction. Well, and if we buy something that needs work, the benefit for us is coming from construction before the food truck is that that's what we did. So we're more we can do whatever we want. of making it whatever we want. So I thought, well, I want to have a washer and dryer. So why don't we take the fourth why cabin? Not? <laughs> why don't we take the fourth cabin and Ty's gonna wanna have all of his tools, so or at least a good portion of them. So I figured if we turned the fourth cabin into a storage room slash <laughs> tool crib slash workroom slash laundry room, and then we can take the fourth head and actually kind of convert that a little bit. So this would be whichever side of the boat we decided to be on. It would actually be on the owner's side and we would maybe extend the shower for our head and open up that wall. And so, because the showers back up to one another, so we could have a larger shower and then the rest of the head that's in the fourth cabin well, side. Have we have to find a fourth cabin. But it's a great idea. It is, so we're gonna look for a 450. The head would be the pantry. We would convert that into a pantry. We're going to try to buy a 450 in our budget with enough room left over to do all the stuff that she wants to do in the boat. That's the mission now. We so, came, by, I'm glad we came. So this is a celebratory lunch after we did everything to say, we've decided we want a 450 fly. Charter version. So you see the look. I mean, there's, they're out there. How old? How much work? What are we going to do? Rudy, you've got your work cut out for you. Good luck. <laughs>
So I'm going to eat now. Find yeah. something. Well, we'll call you back. Let me see what she says. That's, that's something to consider. All right. Bye. All right. So that was Rudy. And Rudy said that they found us a Lagoon 450 that we might be interested in. <laughs> might? Well, yeah, yeah, here's the rub. Um, it's in Maryland, so it's closer. Really? Yeah. It's in Maryland, so it's closer. And there is, um, it's got new engine and sail drives. It was a hurricane damaged boat. Oh. Um, they brought it here from the Virgin Islands. I don't know where, where it was at exactly. But they motored it from the Virgin Islands back to Maryland? Yeah, because there's no mast or rigging. Oh. So. Well, that's like um, $50,000. Or more. But they only want two sixty five dollars for the boat. And it's a 2016. Okay. So, I don't know. What do you think? This whole process is making me nauseous. Like, I'm getting... Yeah. So two sixty five for the boat, seventy thousand in rig. So now you're gonna be in, you know, somewhere in that three thirty realm for a twenty sixteen Lagoon four fifty. I don't know. I mean, I. Worst we can do is write an offer and look at it, right? Yeah, and at least it's in the states. So if we're gonna go look at it, then right, we can just it fly from Colorado. Easier. Get out to Maryland and back again. That'll be a pretty good yeah, trip. Yeah, I guess. All right. Let's put an offer on it and see. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. We'll okay. call. Okay. So that's going to put us in at, you know, mid-low threes with other stuff that we don't know that needs to be done. But you can't get anywhere near a 450 for that price. Okay. All right. Well, write the offer. And, uh, and we'll sign it. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Can you offer less? <laughs> okay. Talk to the broker and Okay. All right, thanks Rudy. Bye-bye. All right, he said give him a few hours and he'll write up a contract and we'll send it off. Well, based on what time it is today, I don't think I will get it today. I don't think so either. It's already after 5. Yep. So, so I'm going to get you in the camera. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Great. Okay. 2016, 450. It's going to need some work. Supposedly, by the pictures, it looks like the boat's in good shape. It just needs new rigging. And, uh... I mean, we said before that a boat that needed work was okay. I just wasn't expecting a hurricane-damaged boat that didn't have a mast and rigging. Yeah, I mean dock rash or some dilapidated or wear and tear lack of maintenance whatever is one thing but I don't know about we'll see we'll see what see how the uh, and he's how the gonna try goes. he's gonna try and write it for less yeah okay. yeah okay you know I hate you right now right I know you do okay I don't want to do this it's gonna be fine so I'm sitting here, standing here actually. It's Tuesday, July 30th, 2019. And after much looking online, um, going out and spending time in Florida and looking at boats, we yes. finally have decided what we think our boat should be. And then after much exhaustive looking have actually possibly found a boat that isn't perfect. Um, but we think that we can make it perfect. And so we are now to the point where we are going to make an offer. <laughs> we are. Very scary. We're making an offer. Um, so th we have, we've got our computer here and we are gonna share with you the actual acceptance, the clicking, the putting the money down, all of that fun stuff. So let's uh, spin it around and, uh, oh, here we go. All right, Kim. To click the little box. I don't think that I want to be the one to do this. Well, we're doing this together. You ready? <clears throat> so I'm 
when you're ready. Oh, I just did it. Oh my gosh, oh, she did it. <laughs> she did it without me. Well, apparently I, I, did I, did, I didn't too. get to be involved in that. Um, but <laughs> here we go. Oh my God, I didn't mean to. Congratulations, you successfully e-signed your document. And, uh, I didn't want to be the one to touch the button. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to receive well, a copy by email. Go ahead and email me. We will receive a copy me. by email, and we'll give you guys an update soon. I touched the button. Bye. Okay. What's wrong? Okay, well, what does he want? What? What? Okay, well, we gave them everything he asked for, and now he's adding both of those things? Yeah, we're not. We're not doing that. This I mean, I want to make sure that you get paid, but yeah. No, 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 no. Nope. Okay, well, reply back to the broker and tell him absolutely not, and we'll see if he signs it. All right, thanks for being on top of this. Talk to you later. Bye. This doesn't sound good. So, <laughs> now he's decided he's not going to pay any commissions, so we have to pay our broker. What? Our broker's commission as the buyer, which is not how this works, by the way. And, which... Wait, so now the purchase price just increased by 5% for is, us because he wants us to pay... Which, okay. Right. So at two sixty five, dollars plus the fact that we have put a mast and a rig on it, now it's another $13,000 to pay our broker their commission. On top of that, that that's not even the weird part. <laughs> it gets worse? Oh yeah. After we close, he wants to live on the boat that we own for a month. Shut before up. Before we can take the boat. Boat people are weird. Okay. So is he going to pay like... Nope. No pay. He's not going to pay anything. I think the only thing that he is going to pay, I'm assuming, is the dock fees because it's sitting on a dock. But who knows? I mean, if you wanted me to pay your commissions and you want to live on the boat after I own it, who knows what he wants? But I told him no. So Rudy is going to tell him, tell the broker that we're not going to accept it. So they can either take the contract as we submitted it or um, he doesn't have to sign it and then it expires. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, we're not doing this. It's done. I'm not. There's always another boat. Oh, my God. So much for quick clothes. This roller coaster. <clears throat> the roller coaster process has been crazy. Like. All right. All right, you ready? All right, here we are in the fun-filled city of Las Vegas and we're getting ready to go dinner with our friends and we got a contract put together on a boat we found a tortola we didn't find it our broker found it for a 2016 lagoon 450f and i think she's going to be a little rough but it'll be a good project and we'll take you along so we're getting ready to make the offer on the second boat that we found. The I'm, first one did not go through. I'm gonna try and not accidentally do it by myself. I, Kim jumped the gun last time and did it by herself. So this time we're gonna do it together. So you can push, ready? Confirm and sign. Wait, it is 438 on September 10th. It's a Tuesday. Happy anniversary, Jason and Amy. That's right, ready? And go. go. It's done. Recording e-signature. If everything goes and we get a signature from the seller, I'll be getting on a plane and flying to Tortola here in a couple days. And uh, I'll take you along the ride and we'll go see what we can find. And we'll call Kim and see if she's okay with the condition the boat is actually in. But in the meantime, we have a surveyor going out at the end of the week. They're going to do a mini survey on the boat and tell us if it's worth flying down there. And honestly... Uh, the next step, we'll bring you along, and it's confirmed. Congratulations, you have successfully, successfully, he signed your document. Now it's time to drink. <laughs>
Stella, do you know how people can support us? You can like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You can subscribe to our channel. You can like this video and you can become a member of our Patreon by joining the crew and the links will be in the description below. Yay, Stella! Nux. Yeah. No one else